And Coming we up. are here bringing Dr. Mary Afsali back for a second episode. If you- and the theme for this week for Munchy Monday is boundaries. And my solutions always are in the direction of creating an environment that is most gentle and inductive of positive energy for the healing process of the body. Yes, it is an Eastern philosophy is based on Chinese traditional medicine, which is uh, based on the acupuncture points. And then these meridian pathways are the energy pathways, which are called and it is connected to the bloodstream and to the Ooh, nervous system sense. of the body. This is one of my patients that we are almost done with her. There were multiple level of issues. Number one, she has an extra, you want to call it either central or ladder. want to invite you to the first annual Munch Bunch Wellness and Rejuvenation Retreat in the Dominican Republic, November 9th through the 12th, 2023. It will be an all-inclusive retreat meant to refuel you, give you a chance to rest, relax, and network with others in our Munch Bunch family. We will also be talking about ways to get out of your own way so you can live your dreams, build your business, and do what you need to do. So check it out. The link is in the description, and the dates are November 9th through the 12th. Hello, and welcome to the Munch Bunch podcast. I am your co-host, Megan Van Noy, myofunctional therapist, with my favorite myo bestie and real-life bestie, Kimmy Nishimoto. And we are here bringing Dr. Mary Afsali back for a second episode. If you guys uh, haven't, well, actually, technically, it could even be a third because we split yours into two parts because yours was so amazing. Um, So if you guys caught those episodes with Dr. Afsali before, we briefly discussed tooth meridians and how they're connected to different parts of our body. And so we begged her to come back and she agreed and she's here. Uh, So we get to talk about that tonight. But before we do, we are going to pull our card for the week, our affirmator. So Dr. Afzali, you get to pick. All right. (laughs) All right. (laughs) uh, Thank you for the introduction. And thanks for having me again. I love to be on your podcast. And my goal is to really bring awareness about the subjects that could avoid non-reversible and invasive dental procedure for patients. So uh, as far as the cards, let me... <laughs> let me shuffle in. <laughs> this one. Oh, the... okay. I think it's the one that's touching my thumb. Okay. Oh, how cute. Okay. So there's a little pig and a skunk on a bench together. Yeah. <laughs> and the theme for this week for Munchy Monday is boundaries. I claim my right to set healthy boundaries and I allow others to do the same. Sometimes personal space is taken and sometimes it's given. And sometimes if you're on the subway, it's completely disregarded and shamelessly invaded. I guess it depends on the day. (laughs) I like that. Actually, it goes very well with the subject that we're talking about, <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, there are different boundaries and a discussion of this subject by no means is nullification of the other boundaries, but it's just additional awareness and additional information to expand our knowledge and our view and think about it and see, are there additional information that we might be benefiting from? Mm-hmm. And as I said, the whole goal is consumers are educated and they can make the best decision possible. That Mm -hmm. is my mission. (laughs) And uh, uh, that's basically the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point because I know we've talked about this before and you and I have talked about this before as well, but um, I had bicuspid extractions. They took out the four permanent premolar teeth um, because when I was a kid, I had such 
a tiny mouth. They said I had really big teeth for my mouth, which really I just had really small bone structure. But the options given to my parents was she can have jaw surgery or we can take these teeth out and do expanders. This is my mouth with expanders. I can't even imagine what a mess it was before. Um, So that's the one they chose because they're like, well, that's obviously going to be a lot less traumatic, less damaging. So of course we would do that. We don't want to put our child through surgery. Now, many years later, all my life growing up, I always had teeth grinding, sleep apnea as a child, um, really bad nightmares every night. And I've been on this process of my airway journey, trying to like turn back and work on some of that functional pieces that I can control that um, are not so much structural down the road. Who knows? Maybe I could choose to do jaw surgery or some sort of expander. Or if I'm ever in California for long enough, I'd come see you for fast braces, but (laughs) Mm -hmm. you might have to make yourself be in California. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. I knew about uh, you know, the treatment options that you were giving, but you elaborated it uh, further. And I can really see and empathize with parents when you give them the option, when their options are either jaw surgery or extraction of poor teeth, of course they will pick that option. Mm-hmm. And um, But I want to share with you guys not only about meridian. I, I want I, we will definitely cover the meridian pathways. I will go over the this general idea, the concept, and how it relates um, to the tooth meridians. Briefly go over that, and then I will show you some of my cases and just uh, sh- discuss it. When I make this type of decisions for my patient, what is the background knowledge? What is the idea that uh, I follow uh, to make those decisions? And um, the great thing is that uh, these days, the consumers are exposed to so much information. The only thing is, the only caveat is that not all the information necessarily are true. And they have to uh, really dissect each part of the information and do their own analysis and evaluation in order to come up with the best decision. And that's the approach that I have. My consultations are extensive and I spend a lot of time educating uh, patients because at the end of the consult, I tell them, you know, this this is the situation. These are the structures that are involved. And then I want you to make a decision, this proposal that I have for you, or sometimes it's more than one option. You decide what is the right choice for you because that I, I would feel much more comfortable when people are engaged in making their health decisions because they will be participating more and it is um, much more effective when Mm -hmm. that understanding is backing up that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true, right? Like there's room for all different types of medicine out there and right and different things that are good for our bodies in different ways. So it's important to know what all of those things are in order to make the best choice for you and best choice for your body. And then also kind of know what the risks are, right? You know, kind of what would be the risk of, you know, doing this root canal versus, you know, a different alternative method. What would be the risk of taking out those premolars versus expanding, right? And we know because we're the health providers and this is what we've experienced in our lives, but not everybody knows and not everybody even on a professional level keeps up with what's going on or looks kind of outside their lens to talk about these things. So I, I love being able to hear different perspectives and how the body's connected in different ways. So how did you learn about the tooth meridians? I don't feel like they probably uh, taught that in school. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's an interesting uh, uh, question that you had. And, you know, I've been always um, trying to find a solution. And my solutions always are in the direction of creating an environment 
that is most gentle and inductive of positive energy for the healing process of the body. Because I strongly believe in our body's um, potential and healing ability. And if we put the body in uh, to the uh, in the right emotional, physical, and um, environmental energetic you know, mm -hmm. yes exactly epigenic exactly the body can is a smart and can do it and um, sometimes people ask me how do you do these type of cases and one of the agreements that i have with my patients uh, before i start these surgical cases is that i sort of test it and check it uh, with their level of reality that do you even believe that this is possible are you ready to start on this journey because without their state of mind being with aligned with mine it's going to be a struggle it's, it's not going to be as uh, inductive and also my team my team that work with me they have the same state of mind. And I'm very sensitive in terms of perceiving different energies around me. And I work actively on making uh, those energies all aligned through education, through understanding, through encouragement, and through sh sharing the results with them. So inspire them from the you know, perspective that there is hope and of course, they also see my very, very conservative and very thoughtful process with every case. It's a lot of understanding about each situation and how to approach it for the best results and minimum risk. So there are combination of factors that are important. But again, going back to the awareness and education that comes before anything else. And the uh, material that I put together to share with you guys is just an introduction to this subject. And we'll see how your audience embrace it. And if they are more interested, then we can further elaborate on it. Um, but uh, I just try to put something very basic for tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, is the theory of the teeth being aligned to... Um... Uh, energy meridian is that an eastern philosophy similar to like acupuncture acupressure or is it um something else yeah a very good question with that uh, uh, yes it is an eastern philosophy is based on chinese traditional medicine which is uh, um, based on the acupuncture points and then these meridian pathways are the energies energy pathways which are called qi, qi which in chinese they call it chu and in english means that and i'll show you and uh, the oh could you please make me oh yeah mm -hmm. and i can let you screen. share your screen mm -hmm. sure. yeah and um is it similar to qi or qi, like qi, qi? Yes, the chi, yes, absolutely, chi. So basically, this is the concept that um, truth is an alive structure and is cap it is capable of inducing life. <laughs> and it has a connection to the source of energy. And by... This is just the overall concept, and I found the perfect slide for it. But going to the overall uh, concept of the meridian pathways, uh, they are energy channels in the Chinese medicine. And according to this theory, these pathways are believed to, to be responsible for the flow of vital energy, the energy that is alive and is vital and creates life which is called chi and then this is the symbol which in english means that hmm. and then there are 12 meridian pathways in the body these are the main one but then each one of these 
associate with other ones and the collaterals. And then when we get into the tooth meridians, that goes into the associated one, to the one further down. And the way that these are, it's a network that connects various points of the body. And it's fascinating. I love this concept that there are these 12 um, and meridian, uh, the 12 organs that are related, they are, uh, they form six uh, yin yang, which are two energies that are opposite of each other, but it's interrelated. And the way that they have uh, organized this thought is that lungs and large intestine are together, stomach and a spleen, heart and a small intestine, urinary bladder and kidney, pericardium and triple burner. Uh, so, and then the gallbladder and then the liver. So mm -hmm. that's how they have uh, divided these. And um, the flow of chi through this meridian is believed to be essential for maintaining not only physical uh, well-being, but emotional well-being. So I have seen a major improvement in my patients as they go through a holistic approach in dentistry without extraction, without surgeries, how much their energy increases. And any of these blockages that happen in qi, of course, is going to have, based on this concept, not only physical impact, uh, but also emotional uh, impact on one's health. So uh, any questions before I go to the tooth meridian, to the chart? I love just this. Knows. Interesting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, I, jinx, jinx, jinx. <laughs> I like to think of the energy meridians like if you could strip strip us down and think of our bodies like a robot or something, the energy meridians would be like the um, electrical system. Like if you could see all the little cords and stuff inside of our robotic body, that's what the energy meridians remind me of. But it's not just the electricity. That's what's so interesting. It's the the energy of it as well. Um, I got trained in EFT tapping, and uh, there's a really wonderful documentary on YouTube that's free to watch. It's called the Tapping Solution Documentary. And when you're doing the tapping, you are tapping some of the energy meridians and then repeating uh, phrases for whatever is bothering you or giving you pain or or emotional distress and you tap those points as you repeat what it is that's bothering you and then you work on the next piece which is I love and accept myself and it's just like a different application for using that energy flow yeah that's wonderful thank you for sharing that and what you mentioned is interesting also looking at these the six pairs that are going the energies that are different and they are even opposite but then they are related to each other so we can see that you know the body the harmony that is demanded of the body it, the nature is asking for harmony and for cooperation and for understanding you know this is going at a deeper level um, mm -hmm. i look at it that uh, in order to survive we need to develop the ability to understand each other better we need to work with each other better and if we want our body uh, to be healthier, we need to be connected with the body mm -hmm. and uh, have uh, our perception uh, directed to different parts and be more, um, I would say, respectful. 
<laughs> listening yeah. to the body, listening to the body, you know. Uh, I just love the Eastern philosophy and the very gentle and human way of looking at human being and the bodies and the emotional aspect, you know, uh, th these are things that uh, I've been always fascinated about. Yeah. I'm dying. Oh, it's just so connected. Oh, sorry, Kimmy. I'm just like, I just can't get over just how connected our body is all the time. <laughs> so going now to the teeth chart, um, these are the my teeth number. You know, we have canines that are connected to the eyes and hmm. the lip. So, and then we have um, the bicuspids that are related to lungs and the large intestine. We have that's um, fascinating, actually. Let's break that down a little bit. So the bicuspids, aka the premolars, that's often the tooth that's most often removed for crowding or orthodontic reasons. But what do you think about with people who have a small mouth or have had extractions? Difficulty with breathing or sleep or difficulty with digestion as they often don't chew their food well enough or thoroughly enough. Wonderful observation. That That is fantastic. You're right on the spot. <laughs> You're ahead of me. I was going to cover those, but you got it right there. Um, yes, absolutely. What you point out, you know, we just need to think, why a small palate shrunken uh, and uh, high palates, vaulted palates, why those are patients that are having difficulty with breeding and all the manifestation that goes along with that. So you mentioned, you, you described it very well, absolutely. And, uh, I think the there is quite a bit of validity right there. And then um, the molars, uh, the first and second molar are connected to the breast, spleen, stomach, thyroid, and of course, esophagus. That's quite uh, embracing, like the amount of or the, the, the number of organs that are connected. Yeah. And then. That's a lot. <laughs> Our friendly wisdom teeth, endocrine gland, the small intestine, and the heart. And again, I'm not here to make any conclusion, uh, you know, uh, about anything. But if we look at the digestive issues, if we look at the endocrine, like thyroid is becoming like a an epidemic, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Different conditions of thyroid. Yes, we're talking about uh, stress, environmental stress. We're talking about uh, toxicities. We're talking about um, um, food toxicities. We're talking about the chemical toxicities. We're talking about the stress in life. But isn't it good to think about wisdom teeth also? And if they are in the mouth and they're functioning and it's okay, leave them alone. Yeah. You know, wouldn't that be just a little safety valve that we leave there if we have that additional um, knowledge or information, which may have some value to it? Yes. Mm. And then uh, we go with the centrals and laterals that is basically urinary tract, the kidneys, the prostate, the bladder, uterus, rectum, and uh, you know, it goes into the uh, the large intestine, the end of the large intestine and the reproductive system. We want to introduce this thought for Tots course, a parent's guide for toddlers ages two to five for Mini Mayo. We have Megan and Kimmy going over nasal hygiene, myofunctional exercises, breathing exercises, tongue tie healing protocols, and then we have Jenny June going over sleep hygiene, 
and Kelsey Baker going over feeding therapy and body work. Uh, the course is $2.97 and the link will be in the description. Uh, so um, let me share with you a couple of incidents that throughout my career I have came across. Uh, when I was in Chicago, this was like a long time ago, maybe about 25 years ago, uh, I had a patient that came to the office and she was having severe pain on number six. And she came for a second opinion because she had gone to another doctor and they want to do a root canal buildup and a crown on that tooth. And because the tooth was healthy, like the tooth didn't have any cavities, there was no gum disease, anything, she came to me. She wanted to get a second opinion. And when I saw her, I, of course, did my own inspection of the tooth. I checked the bite, the occlusion, and nothing was really there. Then my suggestion to her was that, um, do you have uh, any doctor that you can go to to evaluate your liver and see if there is any cleansing that needs to happen or if there is any gallbladder issue or anything and that patient believe it or not 25 years ago was very receptive and um, you know took this advice from me and went to check uh, with the doctor. Uh, she didn't come back for uh, any uh, further procedures because she was very convinced that I would be able to help her. She didn't come back to me. So I assume that she found the solution with another approach and, uh, you know, took care of the issue because. Uh, I, if she was going to do a root canal, I'm sure she would do it at our office because, you know, she she was convinced that um, the approach is something that she had agreement with. But anyhow, uh, that was one experience. And then the other experience that happened about, I would say, six years ago in my Lake Forest office. And... Uh, I used to uh, do lectures about this and I was going into a community in, near my office and do these lectures. And uh, in fact, I did ha have some uh, interview. I, I had an interview on TV that was talking about this. So this lady found me and uh, she was very natural and holistic. Uh, you know, she had a natural and holistic mentality. Uh, she did have breast cancer, but she didn't want to go to conventional medicine. And she was approaching it uh, from a standpoint of, uh, you know, a holistic approach. Uh, and uh, she came and she told me, why don't you look and see, do you see any of my teeth that could be related to that? And it was, I believe, tooth number either two or three that she did have infection on the tooth. Uh, I, uh, and uh, it was pretty severe. So we did the extraction and uh, with the, uh, quite a bit of um, uh, going through the um, the after the extraction, making sure that the bone is also clean and free of any infection. And uh, then she got, of course, I didn't recommend an implant for her. I said a bridge would be a better option for you. And um, she, um, uh, we, we treated at her and she was fine. Um, so that, that was another thing that I'm not saying that every patient that is having, um, you know, breast cancer is having problem definitely with number two or three or 14 or 15. Um, but this one I did see um, that um, 
there was infection in that area. Uh, but uh, the, basically the message that I have is um, taking the oral health at a different level rather than seeing a small cavity and thinking, oh, it's just a small cavity. Let's leave it alone. As long as it's not hurting me, it's okay to leave it alone. That is something that by understanding that if there is a possibility that the thyroid and the breast and the stomach and the pancreas could be affected by that, wouldn't that be smart to have to have it taken care of fast? And if you're doing it, not to use amalgam filling, but you using materials that are not toxic to the body. You know, basically that's um, the way that I would look at it. Mm -hmm. What I that's think so is interesting. Oh, man, that's so interesting. Ugh. Okay, I have a question about wisdom teeth, but Kimmy, you go first. No, do your wisdom teeth one, and then I'm going to ask mine. Okay. So what about, so kind of it's two questions. One, you know, are if the teeth are like impacted as wisdom teeth, but like not necessarily causing any problems, um, for instance, my I have a number one, but it's never come out or gone anywhere. It just kind of lives up here, just chilling. Um, you know, is that still considered connected? Do things have to be erupted? And then question two is, what if you only have one wisdom tooth? <laughs> so genetically, I the other three tooth buds never formed for me. So is everything kind of would be just be connected to the one, or like what? Are, how does that work for like people who have congenitally missing teeth? That's a very good question, and my answer is just my viewpoint is not yeah. a scientific, you know, fact about this. I just feel like that if the tooth is embedded in the bone and doesn't have a periodontal ligament and the connection, this life that we are uh, showing here, you know, this, this <laughs> slide that I put in, mm -hmm. that is, um, from my viewpoint, that would be a reference to the point that is vital and it is connected to the bloodstream and to the mm -hmm. nervous Makes system sense. of the body. But if it is isolated, an isolated structural thing, it's just rather than being bone, it's enamel, dentin, and you know, thing, and there is no connection to the, um, the it's lacking PDL, and as a result, doesn't have any connection uh, to the uh, circular system. And a circuitry system and to the you know arteries or uh, veins uh, or um, nerves i don't see how this would be impacted and um, mm. contributing to that fellow i would just think that it is just what the bone is whatever energy bone has it would be po mostly part of that it becomes a complementary to that structure rather than being in, in uh, a thing of its own like we are having here. Hmm. About the missing one, that's the structure, that's the nature that your body is. And I wouldn't worry about that any bit at all because who knows, maybe your body didn't see the necessity for the others, other than, and then as a result, the energies got transferred more to the other part. You see, because that's a nature mm -hmm. given. It is not a man interference with your uh, structure. It's something that your body presented to you. I had three wisdom teeth. I was missing one. Mm. And that's all you had my mind. other ones. Mm -hmm. I have yours. You had my other ones. Yeah. <laughs> so between me and you, we can have one. Person. We got one mouth. <laughs> yes. So basically, that that's how I see it. I wouldn't question the body. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I, I would, again, I put... Uh, 
I give the body the credit and the value that it's smart enough to manage the best under circumstances that has. Mm, and that. by giving that, I think we are flowing power and we are putting some positive thought. Mm. And, um, our organs are smart. Our body parts are smart. Um, I don't know. It might sound a little bit strange uh, to probably some people that hear me, but I'm a strong believer in life, life as energy, no matter if it is in the form of plants or animals or mm -hmm. humans, the, the energy that is create this energy that is life is very clever, is very smart, and is capable of um, flourishing in the presence of admiration and understanding and love. I, I share with you guys a story. I bought, uh, we bought our home about two, two and a half years ago. And we moved to the house after, you know, doing some work about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Yeah, about a year and a half ago. And of course, because the house went through renovation, the gardens were not in the um, best, uh, you know, look. And of course, when, you know, there, there were things that kept breaking, like the sprinkler system and things like that. And I just really focused on putting so much love and attention to all the uh, plants that were around me. And I just, I would express it. I would just walk around and I would say, oh, thank you for being so beautiful oh. and making, making my environment so beautiful. And you should come and see my flowers now. Of course, I provided them water also. And if the gardener wasn't gentle with them, I would let the gardener know that this is not the way that I want you to handle them. And you see these flowers, the same roses. Now they are different. They are fuller. They are bigger. They are beautiful. They last longer. I, I strongly yeah. believe that uh, there is a lot of intelligence in life. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is just when we look at our bodies and we look at it from that perspective, I believe... Um, it is a culture change. It is something that we need to evolve rather than resorting, being uh, putting our attention our, uh, on our faults and deficiencies, like uh, aging, getting you know older, and then uh, oh, I need this, I need that, I need to put this. Uh, look in, embrace the beauty that. And, you know the body has and believe me it it does make a difference it really mm -hmm. uh, self-care mm -hmm. has different levels uh, at the physical level at the emotional level and that emotional level i strongly believe in it mm -hmm. I, I went too far <laughs> uh, on the philosophical part of life but uh, i believe i love it, it. <laughs> i love it i love it let's see more of these cases <laughs> Yes, yes, great. So, if you guys don't have any question, I want to now relate my decisions uh, about cases, treatment of cases, how I, I think of these concepts that we talked about. Yeah, show us what you got. Sure. This is one of my patients that we are almost done with her. You know, of course, there were multiple level of issues. Number one, she has an extra, you want to call it either central or ladder. <laughs> she has five rather than four. And then, of mm -hmm. course, she was a tongue truster, as mm -hmm. you see. And then this tooth was completely rotated outside of the arch. And crossbite, of course, unilateral crossbite, you know, shifted. A anytime that I see unilateral crossbite, I look at it, you know, we are there for some work because that means the jaws are 
not in the alignment. You know, we have to uh, put that as a part of treatment. So this is their palette. Mm. And um, I show you this because this was a perfect justification for me to say, okay, she has an extra central or that, you know, in fact, it's central. This is an extra one. And if you look at the position of the teeth, you know, the class three canine and all of that, it would be an easy approach to remove one of these and then to remove one of these and then rotate the other mm -hmm. one. Of course, I would never do something like that because I would know that then I'm reducing the size of her jaw and with her tongue trusting, you know, the tongue is telling me I need more room. This tongue is telling me that I want that additional tooth on the top because the alignment of the bottom, the, that additional uh, central in the bottom has given me the idea and I'm in a habit. I have grown into it and now, you know, I need more space. This is what I'm talking about, really understanding body parts and their language. Mm -hmm. So this is what I did. This is what she looks like now. Incredible. And this is what the palette wow. is. This is a line. Even with an extra central, you see the midline. Mm -hmm. And this tooth is solid like a rock. We just need some gum graft because it didn't have that. Mm -hmm. That's it, it probably had hardly any bone around it because it was like it up didn't. in the palate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It didn't at all. You see that it was outside of the buckle. Mm -hmm. I and still can't believe you did that. So for our listeners, there was like two rotated premolars. One of them was like sticking out towards the gum and the other one was kind of like pushed in towards the palate. So two premolars stacked on top of each other, turned sideways, and she aligned them. Yeah, and when you look at the palate, you see that this is an issue. You know, this patient is having the right treatment is not to reduce this palate, but to give more room. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my cases which I want to share with you guys. And then this is another case. This patient was told she needs to have four bicuspid, at least four bicuspid extracted. This is her side. Wow. And uh, she would need to be on braces, I think, for five years or plus, something like that. How and old Dr. Sally? She's 31 years old. And this is, oh, we did finish it. You guys saw her uh, on Instagram. We posted the one that we showed before and asked mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And you see this to this. And uh, wow. this to this. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And uh, wow. this to this. Beautiful. You're so amazing. Thank you. And this wow. to this. So I educate patients that come for consult with me. I say, if she would have these two beautiful teeth, by, by the way, are these cosmetics so beautiful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if those two were extracted, we would not have expansion of this. Mm -hmm. We would only fit these teeth. But the only reason that we got from here to here is because we know that this is giving her a mid face that is going to be anti-aging. And her face already looks lifted. Can you imagine what would be the impact of this person going into 60s, 70s, 50s, and this person? Mm -hmm. There is the fundamental difference. So those are the things that I hope uh, practitioners, <laughs> patients pay really attention to it. Uh, I think we are still uh, somehow very little. Unfortunately, is going less and less. But in this mentality of tooth is a problem, let's pull it. Mm -hmm. You see, okay. there is a little bit residue of that mentality. And my yeah. message is no. I admire teeth. You know, I, I respect every single one of them. I love that. They are part of life, and we need to keep them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need to manage to have them, keep them. Yeah. So there, there are. Uh, this is another case. Uh, um, let me, yeah, this is the front view. Wow. If, yeah, and then this is the side view. Like, really, there is no... So when I look at this, I don't say that we don't have enough room. I say, um, like, we need to pull it to create room. I say we don't... We have uh, incomplete eruption mm. of the canines due to hypoplasia, which is uh, not having adequate amount of bone. We have what is called hypoplasia in this case. That means we don't have enough bone. And if you look at it, in other words, I don't look at the contour of the arch here. This is incomplete. This, this arch is not fully developed. Right. This arch needs to come up, come further to accommodate this. And this is what happened with her. 
Uh, these pictures, she's almost done. These pictures are the day before, but wow. you see, this, this happened in six months, going from this to this. Wow. Um, and then this is what it was. I mean, this G, but probably the way that the position, it would okay. be easy for anyone to just grab. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and when you look at it, her talent is not as um, like constricted as the other one, but still, this when we go from that to this. Wow. You see, that's what really makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And you are doing this, you're achieving all this like growth and expansion, not with expanders, but with fast braces. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, with fast braces, however, fast braces also you need to treat it in a way that you need to, to get these results because yes, fast braces is my favorite tool and it's some it's a technology that has allowed me to really do what is my dream to help my patients at the level that I can mm -hmm. do. Without fast braces, there is no way that I could achieve this type of results. However, that doesn't mean that you just go with fast braces and then everything is going to be rosy also. In this type of cases, there is a lot of details into it in terms of doing the right thing at the right time, the amount, you're putting correct amount of um, action in mm -hmm. at the right time, you know. So there, yeah, but basically the whole uh, magic about fast braces is that the only technology in orthodontics, as far as braces are concerned, it has capability of creating alveolar bone because it is gentle, the, it is, uh, it has flexible wire and these wings, you see these mm -hmm. wings, further allow the flexible wire to glide. As a result, the amount of pressure on PDL is minimal and is just to the right amount for the stimulation of, for conversion of the stem cells at the PDL uh, to um, osteoblasts rather than osteoclast. The way that we treat the teeth, we can induce osteoblastic activity, which means bone forming cells, or osteoclastic activity, bone dissolving cells. When we put too much pressure and we cause suffocation of the uh, PDL uh, and deprivation of PDL from uh, oxygen and blood supply, we get osteoclastic activity, which is bone uh, resolving, bone dissolving. Uh, cells. And when we treat it gently, then we get osteoplastic activity. This is the magic about fast braces, the design of the bracket and the flexible wire that we go from a start to finish of the treatment. But then we also need, like I show you something, another case. I think I have shown you guys this case, but I'll show it because it has it's a right concept as we're talking about. Like this case. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, is not just an orthodontic situation, but the way that I was able to manage her, she actually grew healthy bone wow. in approximately and so papilla. Crazy. She made papilla. And this is happening often, you know, that my patients, if they were candidate for period surgery or, you know, they, they don't need it. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the things that it takes um, a little bit uh, more consideration, but I strongly believe is like the intention that comes, the the respect that you have for what you do, it, it is a reflection of, uh, you know, tissues response. Mm -hmm. uh, th that is um, not um, a scientific <laughs> yeah. uh, term or anything. It's just mm -hmm. my opinion, my yeah. personal opinion, because I have so much respect for life and uh, that's, I look at it. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. And just how, ugh, again, how the body's all connected. 
And even just seeing, honestly, your cases, you can tell like how you, that you do treat the body and you do treat your patient's mouths with so much respect because look at these life-changing results people have been having and you're doing it in a way that's not forcing teeth out of ligaments. That's not, you know, taking teeth out. It's not, you know, it's in a way that like gets the body in such harmony. And I think that's just so cool. And I think we probably should just like clone you a few times. Um, <laughs> <I'd be down. laughs> if you're interested, if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's, I just think it's, I think when you really like respect the body in a certain way, you could, the body really responds for you. Kind of, I think it's just like what you're saying with your flowers, right? The more that you were respecting your flowers and gratitude and loving on them, look at how they responded, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, our bodies are full of life too. And being able to do that the same way and look at how so many of your patients' results have responded. So I just think it's so beautiful. And uh, honestly, we could probably just talk to you all day long. So. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoyed being on your uh, podcast and sharing my thoughts. We Our thoughts are very aligned and uh, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, send my message to people and help as many people as I possibly can. Yes, yes. absolutely. You're, You're going to drive a... those prices in your neighborhood up <laughs> all over again. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a beautiful soul. I kept thinking um, while you were talking about the care that you give to your patients and like when you said, I admire teeth, like I felt so tender to you. It was the cutest thing you could have ever said. Um, but it reminded me of, I've been reading all these books this week about energy work and healing and the EFT tapping, but also like I'm certified in Reiki and uh we're preparing for our um, retreat in the Dominican Republic this fall. So I'm doing a lot of like reading and research for that. Um, but one thing I kept thinking about when you were talking and like, she's kind of like an energy healer for teeth in a way, because some of the principles, principles of Reiki are um, be kind, don't be angry, work diligently, um, be kind to every living thing. And I'm sure there's more, but that's the ones that are popping off the top of my head right now. <laughs> but that's very much you. You're kind to everything, even this little tooth and the little cells around the tooth. And that's one of our favorite things about you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we can never get like too many of your cases. And I know that you share them on your social media and your Instagram all the time. So where can people come find you? Remind us. I know we talked about last time, but. Remind us again, what's your social media handle? Sure. Uh, I am on Instagram and it's doctor, uh, you spell it out, D-O-C-T-O-R dot Afzeli, which is A-F-V-A-L-I. And I'm also on Facebook, uh, uh, which is uh, Dr. Afzeli. Um, and uh, I am on short YouTube and YouTube. Again, under Dr. Afseli, my website is drafseli.com. And uh, I have four locations in Southern California, uh, starting in uh, Orange County, Lake Forest, and then Rancho Pocomanga, uh, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Yeah. And I do uh, virtual consults, uh, which is not limited to distance uh, it is uh, all the needs to uh, you know have that consult I'm also available to that oh speaking of that when you do the virtual are you doing it for healthy start or what is it for yeah it depends on so I have a lot of people that uh, do virtual consult about wisdom teeth they are told that they need to have their wisdom teeth extracted and then they do a consult with me and they see that is this the right way of going or not you know that that's uh, one of the uh, approaches i have had different type of situations people that have been told they need jaw surgery and you know they ask so for orthodontic purposes um, for uh, and also for healthier start both 
Amazing. I love it. I love it. We're going to have to get it. TNG patients is another one. Mm. TMG. Uh, in fact, it would be a good idea that we talk about TMJ in one of the episodes because that's something that uh, it, I think it's troubling for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. All right. You convinced us. You can come back for another episode. <laughs> I think we did, we found a third co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. And of course, you guys can find us um, at the Munch Bunch podcast. You can find us individually at Kimmy at Mouth Muscle Memory. You can find me at NWMFT. And you can also find us in person, you know, basically in Oregon this summer, as Kimmy is also <laughs> a, an Oregonian for the summer with me. Uh, but then in the Dominican Republic at our Munch Bunch Wellness and Rejuvenation Retreat. Um, we are so excited. Um, we keep lining up more and more amazing guests and super, super fun things that we're going to do um, to really help people change their lives on the inside, but also launch your business and create clarity around that on the outside. So thank you so much again, Dr. Afsali. Oh, it's always such a blessing. I'm glad I get to, we're actually recording on a Monday this time, you guys. Um, so I'm actually really grateful and feel blessed to start the week uh, with your recording. So thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you for having me, both of you uh, lovely ladies. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. We'll catch you guys on the next Munchy Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. We have a special offer for our Munch Bunch listeners. To book a virtual consult with Megan, she's offering a discount of $25 off. Just email her, Megan, at nwmyofunctionaltherapy.com or through her website, www.orofacial-myology.com. To book a virtual consult with Kimmy for the $25 off, email her mouthmusclememory at outlook.com or through the website www.mouthmusclememory.com. 